Hey everybody, today's a video on my new series where we do overviews of the XR series mixers. We're going to look specifically at the XR edit software and talk about everything in specific tabs so that you know what you're looking at at any given time. And we're gonna start doing that right now. Let's go! <laughs> So today we're only going to be talking about the channel tab. I'm going to reference everything you're seeing here so that you know what you're looking at at any given time. And the thing I'm going to say first is that all of these settings that you see here, they are specific to the channel that you have selected. So if I make changes on any of these settings, they are going to then be different if I select any other channel I have here available. The settings are independent and these are the reflections of independent settings for each channel. It's not a full console overview, channel specific. So we are going to work on channel one and let's just jump right into what everything is. The first thing here is the channel label. So I can right click in here and I can change the name if I want to, I can type it in uh, or I can actually use something that's predefined in the drop down menu here. And then of course I can change the color scheme. So I'm gonna choose green for this. The next thing right underneath that is the meter. I'm actually gonna turn on phantom power because I have a condenser microphone attached and I want you to see some signal. So this meter is a reference of the input signal. It has nothing to do with this fader. If I pull this down, no difference. So this isn't signal that I can adjust here. This is only signal I can adjust here and we'll talk about this in a second. But this is to give you a reference of what your actual input level is. So if your input level is too low, if you're not getting proper signal to other things in the mixer after sending it from your first channel, this is where you can come to check what your actual input level is. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off again for a second. So that disappears. I'll bring this down just a bit and that level will disappear once the voltage has expired. So the next thing we've got is phantom power, which you just saw me turn on and off. So if you have a condenser microphone, you will need to turn on your 48 volts so that it supplies power to the microphone. Right under that is your polarity or your phase flip. So if you need to flip the phase, you're gonna turn this on and that will do what you want. The next thing we have here is a stereo link button. If I click this, this is going to automatically link my channel with the very next channel so that it creates a stereo pair. And I'm actually gonna lift this up so you can see things happen in real time. As soon as I turn this on, it will tell channel two to start inheriting some of the settings from channel one. So let's do that, boom. So you can see that it inherited the color scheme, it inherited this, and if I had set the gain a little different, it would have inherited that as well, as well as phantom power. In fact, let's just turn that off. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to turn this on, this on, and this on because I want you to see it. And actually, I'll turn this on too. And you can see that when I turned it on, it inherited everything. Everything I had turned on. If this was on, it would also have inherited that. So let's just turn all of this off again. Pull this down, and we'll just put this back to normal. So we've got our... Phantom power, we've got our polarity, we've got our stereo link, and we have now our effects button. This is for inserting an effect. This is not sending an effect to an effect unit or sending signal to an effect unit and bringing it back to mix. This is literally inserting an effect unit into your original signal chain. If you're not sure what that means, I do have a video already on this channel. It'll be linked down below that talks about how to use your effects with these mixers and it covers all of this. Suffice to say, if you do want to insert, you would turn this on. Then under this drop down menu, you would select the effect slot that you want. Let's say effects 1A. And it's going to ask you if you want to switch to insert mode. Obviously, if you're doing this, yes, you do. And then you would come over to your effect and in the correct effect slot, you would insert something like um, a compressor or an EQ. That's really what you would reserve it for. You wouldn't likely be doing this for something like a reverb or a delay, but again, I cover that in my other video. So let's just put in a uh, dual true EQ. And so you can see that the insert is turned on. It's referencing this pink icon that tells you that you've turned it on in the channel. And then it's telling you what channel it's actually inserted on. 
you can see that there's two drop downs here. Because this is a stereo unit, I could actually insert the other side of it on, let's say, channel two, and I could have two different EQs going. You can see if I make a change here and then click on B, completely separate EQ. That's, that's how you do your insert. So let's just turn that off, put it back to off. The next thing we see here is the gain. So this is how you adjust the gain of your physical input. So if I plug a microphone or an instrument into this case, input one, this is how I bring up the sensitivity of that input. It's my channel gain. Now let's jump back up here to the top, USB. You're seeing this button because we're connected to an XR18. If you're connected to a 12 or a 16, you won't have this button, it does not apply. But the 18 allows you to send signal from your mixer to your computer and it also allows you to send signal from your computer back to the mixer. And that's where this button comes into play. If I wanted to use this channel strip to control signal coming back from my computer, I would turn this on and that allows me to assign a USB return to this channel strip. And then with that said, we jump down here. This USB trim is the same idea as the mic gain, but it's the sensitivity, it's the volume boost of the USB signal that's coming back. Let's turn that back off. This brings us over to our noise gate. You can see that there's a gate tab here, and this is a basically a quick reference and a readout of what's happening on the gate tab. It doesn't give you all the parameters to adjust. This is just your quick parameter. So if we look at gate really quickly, you can see there's a whole lot going on here. But if I turn this on and make a quick adjustment to the threshold, so we have a different view here, that is now referenced right here. We have the actual threshold reference here. We have a gain reduction reference, and we have the ability to adjust the threshold as well as turn the gate on and off. We can do that right from here. Jumping over to the next column, this is our equalizer. So as you can see, there's also an EQ tab. Again, there's a lot going on here. But if we make a quick change and come back to our channel tab, you can see that that change is now referenced here. Again, just some quick parameters. A reference, the ability to turn this on and off, the ability to turn the low cut on and off, and then the ability to adjust the frequency of the low cut. That's all you can do from this slot. Jumping over to the next column, Compressor, same thing as the gate and the EQ. If we look at the comp tab, there's a lot going on, but if we turn it on and adjust the threshold for a different view, come back to our channel tab and you're now seeing that here. Reference image, ability to turn it on and off, the ability to adjust your thresholds. And if we were actually doing any compressing, you would see the gain reduction here, just like we do with the noise gate. Next column, our aux bus sends. On this mixer, when you wanna send signal out to one of your aux buses, you would normally, this is the typical way of doing things, you would choose one of the buses. With it outlined, that tells you it sends on fader. So that means if I bring this signal up on this channel, I'm now sending signal out to this first bus. So that's what this is. This is a quick reference of how much signal you are sending to any one of your six buses. I can also drag a fader here and adjust the level going to each of my six buses. Right underneath that, the effect sends. Same sort of thing. If I wanted to send something to an effect, normally I would come over here and adjust that. But I can do that from here as well on any of my four effect units. And so this is really just a reference of how much signal you're sending as well as the ability to raise or lower that signal at any given time. Next column is our main out. So this is everything that's happening with this channel in the main left right bus. So your main left right bus right here, which is typically going out to your speakers. This button right here tells you that this channel is actually sending signal to the left right bus. If for some reason you wanted to take this channel out of your main mix, you can actually turn that button off. Now it is no longer going out through your main left right mix. It will not be heard in your front of house speakers. That signal is gone. You can still use it to send to other places like buses. It will no longer be going out the default route, which is left right. 
turn it back on to put it back in the mix. Panorama. This is literally your pan left and right. Now you can see currently this is slammed over left and that's a result of us hitting the stereo link. By default, your channels are in the center. If you double click, it'll go back to center. But as soon as I stereo link a channel, it slams the left side of that channel over to the left and it slams the right side over to the right. So it's important to mention for stereo channel linking, I didn't mention this earlier, but I should cover it now. You can only link channels one and two and then three and four, and then five and six, and then seven and eight, and so on. You cannot link two with three, and you cannot link four with five, etc. So one goes to two, three goes to four, five goes to six, seven goes to eight, until you get to the end of the row. Just something to note. So you can't have like a microphone on channel one and then a stereo keyboard on channel two and three, because even if I, unlink this right now. If I hit link on two or I hit link on three, if I hit it on three, it's going to link it to four. See that? And if I hit it on two, that's going to link it to one. Just worth noting. Back to the main out section. This is your panorama. And this is the pan that's happening with the channel you're referencing inside the main mix. Pan it hard left, hard right, or double click and have it in the center or anywhere in between. Auto mix. Auto mix is a way to control levels of multiple microphones without having to actually interact with the mixer. So maybe you have a panel of speakers happening and you want the system to turn mics up and down or on and off based on who's talking at any given time. That's what auto mix does. There's two groups or two mix buses for auto mix. You have an X and a Y. And when you click on one of these, it will indicate on your channel strip that you are in an auto mix group. And you can only ever have a channel assigned to one auto mix group. So you'll see that this reference switches between X and Y. The next thing we have is DCA groups. So a DCA group is, it's a way to control multiple channel strips to control their volume from a single fader, which would be a DCA group. So if I turn on a DCA group for this channel, you will see that you get a reference here that tells you you are in a DCA group and it tells you which DCA group. And you can only ever be in one DCA group. So there's no confusion there. You can see that number changing one, two, three, four, and turn it off. The next thing we have are mute groups. This is a way for you to mute multiple channels at the same time with a single button press. So Right here, this is how you assign your channel to a mute group. You can assign it to one or two or three or four or all four mute groups based on how you need to do things. Then if you need to actually turn that mute group on, you come down here to the mute groups button at the master section on the right. So if I turn on mute group one, my channel that's assigned to mute group one gets muted. Same thing for two, it gets muted. And it's working for these channels because I just assigned them to all of them. So actually, let's just turn on three. So mute group one, no mute. Mute group two, no mute. Mute group three, muted because we have it assigned to mute group three. And then of course, we have our meter here. Let's turn this back on. So this is just another reference. Oops, let's turn some gain up here. Let's turn that stereo link off. Check one, two, that's another meter, but this time it's the amount of signal that you are sending to the main out. So if I turn this down, we now lose this. So this meter tells you how much signal's coming in on the channel from the head unit, from the gain, and this tells you how much you are sending out to your main left, right mix. Check one, two, check one, two. So you can see there's a difference there. So there you go. Now you know exactly what you're looking at at any given time when you have the channel tab open in the Xair Edit software. Make sure you check out the links below for the other videos that are in this series. As soon as each one is ready, the link will be available in the description. Anyway, I hope this was interesting, entertaining, educational, and if it was any of those things, please consider liking and sharing and subscribing. You can also check us out on Patreon. Or you can use the link down below to join the channel or even do a super thanks down below if you think anything we do here has been useful to you. And a huge thanks to everybody who's already done that. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quickies.
Bye, everybody.